A mako shark leaps out of the water and chops a Dorado in half in front of the uh, gas passengers on board the Native Sun. We've got an eyewitness that's going to join us in just a little bit, Jaime Gutierrez. Also, tremendous volume of Dorado and the local boats in the LA Orange County area are catching hundreds, thousands of those things every single day and they're on them already this morning. I've already talked to a few of the boys and they're all over. Private boaters also doing really well. And then you go to San Diego, the Malahini, with a huge tuna day. Those 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. boats out of San Diego are starting to score more and more yellowfin and bluefin tuna. Down below, we see a steady flow of more fish and warm water pushing towards Southern California. And also we see tremendous big bluefin tuna biting in the San Clemente Island area. It doesn't get any better as the half day boat Redondo Special had two Dorado yesterday. Good morning everybody. Welcome to the morning briefing here on Friedman Adventures YouTube channel. Let me take a sip of this and we'll get into that and lots more. Mmm. Thanks for letting me do that everybody. I needed my little cup of coffee. Let me get my microphone straight here and let's get into what is truly some phenomenal fishing here in Southern California and Northern Baja. Simply doesn't get any better. Let me mention, first of all, Amigo two-day trip may be full. I'm not sure, but if you want to go, you better send me a text. Amigo two-day trip, August the 31st, it sails. It's going to be fantastic. $6.95 includes all your meals. Two days, only 14 people. And then we have two two-day trips on the Pride, one in September, one in October. I'll send you the list or just look in the show description and you better get a hold of me fast because so many calls are coming in. It's going to be great. 657-227-6459. If you want me to send you the list, I'm happy to do it or look in the show description. You book with me by texting me and man, I can't wait for those trips. We have so many cool people. In fact, last night, Joseph Martinez joined us on our live show. What a great guy. He's the guy that caught the 315-pound bluefin tuna up there on the Endeavor with Tucker McCombs out of Ventura Sport Fishing. And Joseph, you know, when I get an interview and I don't know the person that well, you never know what you're going to get. You might get a guy who doesn't like to talk. You might get a guy who's scared. You might get a guy who's braggadocious. Joseph was the exact opposite of all of that. He was such a nice guy, such a humble guy, who had made this extraordinary catch and downplayed it. Only took me a half hour. It was a nighttime fish. Wasn't that difficult. Just a, an extraordinary guy. And I'm happy I made that acquaintance, and I hope that blossoms into a friendship because he's the kind of guy we love in the Friedman Adventures family. Go back and listen to that interview because you are going to love it. And we also have so much more, including Chef Jason and Anthony Amalfitano, who asked the trivia questions and contributed so much to our show. They're out there right now thumping on the Dorado. At least that's what we are hoping. So many fish in the water right now. You will see them if you get out there. And it's mind-boggling. I mean, when you listen to what Jaime Gutierrez will tell you here in just a moment, I'm going to put him on and let him talk to you about his day on the native sun you're going to be blown away especially the story about the shark coming out of the water what a phenomenal sight what a spectacle of nature how blessed are we to be able to see all of this here in our own backyard in southern california all right i normally start in ensenada south of the border i'm going to go a little bit further down to la bocana where my dear friend Martin Padilla and Friedman Adventures family member is having a great time with a bunch of friends down there catching yellowtail and enjoying Baja hospitality. They are really having some fun down there. Martin is an extraordinary fisherman, an extraordinary private boater, and my hat's off to you, Martin, for having such a great time down there south of the border. Up to Ensenada, Arnie Mann. You can find him on Facebook, Arnie Mann. Go down there and jump on a pongo with him. You will have the time of your life. Down there, they are seeing all kinds of yellowfin tuna. They are seeing all kinds of bluefin tuna, but mostly catching kelp patty fish right now. Arnie, in fact, said, you know, that yellowfin's been difficult to find, but they're seeing more and more of it as we go along. 
Good kelp patty fishing for Dorado and Yellowtail. Mostly flatheads, though. The Dorado bite has been extraordinary down there. The grade of fish anywhere from 5 to 25 pounds. Most of it's that 8 to 12 pound stuff. And it is biting everything you throw at it. Dorado will bite chunk bait. They'll bite the chunk stuff. So the lack of live bait sometimes that you run into down there in Ensenada and poor bait at times because a lot of it, that live bait goes to feed the tuna and the tuna pens. The lack of that is not stopping the boys from having some extraordinary fishing down there south of the border. We continue to get more and more warm water flushing up the Baja coast right now. There's more Chabascos, storms down there around Cabo that are pushing that warm water and more fish up in our direction. And you know what that means? It means that the foreseeable future is bright. It's brilliant. It's looking so good right now with so much warm water and fish coming. Valentino, can I say hi to him real quick? Buenos dias, hermano. That's Valentino. He's a great guy here in Surfside, California. So everything's looking good. And you add to that that we have got this fall weather in SoCal when you have a lack of wind. And it's been a windy, pain in the neck year. But now we're going to go into a scenario where you have lack of wind. It looks so good as we move along. The Malahini yesterday. Bill Wilkerson, you're looking at the deck of the Malahini right now. What a trip they had out of H&M Landing. Now, Bill leaves at 6 o'clock in the morning, comes back at 6 o'clock at night to give you an idea. We've been talking about these schools of yellowfin and bluefin all around the Coronado Islands, which is a stone's throw from Point Loma. It's so close. And now they're settling and biting really well. Boats like the San Diego, the Grande, the Mission Bell, all in on this. It's biting really good. Wilkerson, yesterday, 24 guys on the Malahini, 52 on the yellowfin to 50 pounds. Nice grade. You see some of that 5 to 10 pound yellowfin, but not a lot of it. It's mostly big. Look at the fish on the deck on the Malahini. If you want an indication of the grade of fish, don't listen to me. Look what we're looking at. It's amazing stuff. 12 bluefin to 60 pounds. The fish are biting on the heavy at times, but you still want to have like 30 to 40 pound fluorocarbon. I'm highly recommending flora. It works so well. And of course, we like Opsin fluorocarbon. WWW Opsin fluorocarbon. What am I doing? WWW Opsin USA.com. I'll get this right. Just give me until midnight. Um, and uh, put in FA at checkout. Greg Brown, the owner, will send you a note. Uh, thanking you and also a free gift. So we like that. You need to bring some heavy tackle also. If you have a two-speed, I would highly recommend bringing it. There's some of that 100-pound stuff, even bigger than that, bouncing around in these schools of fish. You never know what you're going to encounter. You've got to be very observant in these bites. You know, you go into a stop, and you can see it's finicky. You go to your 30, 40-pound. You can see it's full speed, wide open. Man, I'll tell you, that's when you go to the heavy because you're going to need it. And once again, we say it over and over and over again, but we have some novice anglers. Go take your time and choose a really hot bait. It makes all the difference in the world. In most cases, 2 size hooks are working. Sometimes on a finicky bite, you'll drop down. Sometimes you're going to take your black tail hooks and go up to a bigger 5-0 hook when you're getting a bite. Tremendous fishing down there for those local boats. And the guys overnight and more out of San Diego, they're encountering more and more fish. The Ranger 85 with good bluefin and yellowfin tuna fishing. Scott Buchert's on there. Jake was reporting it, saying that they've got really excellent fishing going on down below right now. And that mix of fish, that smorgasbord, is so typical of a fall San Diego bite. You get that variety of fish. You get that flat calm weather with little wind. And we are certainly seeing that fact. Here we are in summer, late summer. And boy, I'll tell you, it couldn't look much better than it does right now. Really great fishing going on. Now, let's switch gears, talk about kelp patty fishing out of San Diego and down there out of Northern Baja. We continue to see lots of Dorado on the kelp. Sometimes they bite, sometimes they don't bite. Most of the time, you're going to pick off some fish, and most of the time it's going to be 8 to 12 pound Dorado. Some are bigger, some are that 5 pound Dorado that you can bounce on board the boat. And boy, I'll tell you, you hit the right kelp, and you get done less than an hour on that stuff. They're acrobatic, they jump out of the water, they're so colorful, and they are great table fare. And they can cruise at about 60 miles an hour when they put the afterburners on like Maverick does in Top Gun. So they are speedy fish and they are so beautiful 
to see when you look down in the water and see so many of them swimming around. It's really a phenomenal time of the year right now. And I hope you can get out and experience it really, really soon. And again, gauge your kelp. You know, do you go to the heavy? You can do it in some cases. Do you go to the lighter stuff? You might have to go down to 20 fluorocarbon and even a number two hook if you find that. So really great fishing going on down that way. Now, let me just talk to you about the local Dorado bite here because perhaps that is where it's biting best and what a huge biomass of Dorado we see here in the LA Orange County area. It is phenomenal. It is beyond anything I've ever seen in all the years I've been fishing. That's over five decades here in SoCal. Never ever seen this amount of Dorado, even in El Nino years. And you know, we're in a La Nina year, a cooler water year. That's how enigmatic this whole game is. You just never know. I mean, you're looking at the guy that predicted albacore, a cooler water species, a two, cooler water tuna species. And they snuck down here a little bit closer. I'm not giving up yet, pretty much. But uh, man, I predict that. And then we have the most Dorado we've ever seen in our lives. And that's no exaggeration. Sean Morgan was on here the other day saying he saw millions. A month ago, Mauricio Lopez on the Clemente, or maybe longer, talked about how much Dorado he was seeing and how mind-boggling it was. Albert and Crystal Potts on a private boat well over a month ago were describing a similar situation. And now it's on the bite. City of Long Beach, they were only on a 10 to 4 trip. They had 34 Dorado. That's some good shooting. How about the victory yesterday? Two. 127 flatheads, 227 Dorado on a three-quarter day run out of Long Beach, California. It doesn't get any better than that. Enterprise with a huge day. Gale Force, 12 guys, 120 Dorado, 10 fish per rod. That's limits. By the way, limits 10 in United States waters, two in Mexican waters. So up here, you can get 10 of those little devils. They multiply quickly. They grow fast. So I mean, this is incredible fishing. Western Pride, over 100 Dorado. Redondo Special, half day boat with a couple of Dorado. The Pursuit, talked to John Woodrum and he told me, Phil, I've never seen it before. John's been fishing these waters a long time. Woody said he has never seen so much Dorado. They were up there around 200 on the Dorado. Native Sun with over 100 Dorado yesterday and on board that trip, was Jaime Gutierrez, a guy that I met over at Sam's Place at Island Fishing Tackle in Carson, California. Really a super nice guy. And I'm so glad, another guy that I'm so happy about getting a friendship going with him because he hung out with us during our live show last night and he's exactly the kind of guy we like. Again, humble, nice guy. He joins us right now to describe that Mako shark that came out of the water and bit a fish in half and describe his experience to you looking at copious amounts of Dorado. Take it away, Jaime. Jaime, what is up, my man? What's up, brother? What a trip you just got off of on yes. board. The, you're on the Native Sun, right? The Native Sun. God almighty. I mean, I've heard the stories, but why don't I just fire some questions at you and you tell me, all right? Two friends talking here, right? Yeah, let's do it. How long did it take you to find your first kelp, or was it a kelp? Was it just breezing fish, or what it was it? It wasn't a kelp. It was... What do you call it? When there's nothing. They, they were just there. Breezing fish. They were just breezing fish. Half an hour out. Really? Not even. Not No, not even. I don't know, dude. It was, it was, it felt like we just barely left home and they were there. Oh my God. That is incredible. So when you stop the boat, does everybody hook up immediately or what happens on, on your first stop? On the first stop, yeah. we, we stopped a little bit. We were drifting. Everyone was casting baits. The other boat, there was already... We left at 7 a.m. Yeah. The other boats were already there. Pursuit and those the guys. The Pursuit and all those guys, the, the Newport, Newport Beach boats were yeah. already there. They were already catching. Yeah. We, we got the heads up ahead of time saying that. Get your butt down here. That, that, yeah, we're getting there and they're already biting, so let's just get there. Yeah. We get there and yeah, we did get bit right away. Everybody on the boat. I caught two back to back. Live sardine. Everybody was fly lining. Nobody was jigging. Uh, heavy line, light line. John Woodrum, who ran the boat, or he ran the pursuit. Yeah. He told me they were biting the fifty pound for them over on the pursuit. Did you find the same thing or not? I was fishing twenty pound. Yeah, I did. I did okay. There was a dude fishing forty pound. Yeah, 
He's the one that caught the most. Out of oh, everybody. really? He was, he was, he was killing them. So they were biting, it and he was able to. They really were biting, and they were, they were biting everything. And he put the screws to him. He put the screws to him, and he, he yanked them in, nonstop. And that, that stop, I made a mistake. It wasn't thirty minutes. It was probably like forty-five minutes. We were out because I was timing it. Okay. Because they were saying, you know, we were, we're, we're not going far. Yeah, yeah. We're going nowhere near Catalina. Right. And we found them. They, they, they were just there. And the whole time that we were catching or not catching fish all around the boat you were telling me they're just like swimming around the boat all around the boat how many hundreds hundreds i mean you go to the front they're there you go to the back they're there you go to the sides they're there they weren't all biting but there was fish god Jaime, that just sounds like i've never i don't think i've ever seen anything like that in costa rica or panama or mexico i mean there's more fish here in southern california right now than i think I've ever seen. You have to agree, That's right? That's what everybody was saying. Yeah. I mean, the captain, the, the decks, everybody was saying, there, there's just so many fish, and they're, I mean, if they bite, they bite. If they don't, they don't. But just the fact that they're here is special. And then you look down, and 10 feet below the ocean surface is this grande tiburon, un meco, a meco shark. Take it from there. I saw the meco. It was right under me. <laughs> I told big, man, ten feet. That's a big shark. Yeah, he was yeah ten feet. At yeah, least. he was huge. And I I see him down there, and I told I had one of the deckhands, Chris, next to me, and I said, "Look, a big old shark." He goes, "Oh crap, big old shark." <laughs> yeah. And he disappeared for a little bit, but he was around. And then when one of these dudes that was also next to me had he, he caught a dorado, and right at the he pulled it, you know, he, he, he didn't lifting wait, it on board. He, he didn't wait for the gaff. Yeah. He yanked it right when he did that part. He comes out. The shark like the comes movie. out of the water? The shark comes out of the water. Like freaking Jaws? Like Jaws. <laughs> and, and I was like, oh, damn. I've never seen that in my life. I was just like, I wish somebody would have caught that on camera. Oh, my God. I wish I had that. And snapped the fish in half or what? He, he cut the fish in half, but at the same, like, like he bit into the fish and he pulled down on it. And he made the guy lose the fish. Oh my god! But you could tell, like right at, right when the fish went in the water, the the fish was split in half. But he was also off the hook, so you know. And people around there were they in shock or? We were, were yeah, they... we were kind of in shock. We were like, oh my god, what did we just see? Right? Yeah, it was just one of those crazy, <laughs> well, crazy things that you never see. The weather good, nice flat. Calm. Weather was cool. The, the ocean was calm. Nice sunny day. It was overcast like half of the day, and then then it got sunny, and it was it was a beautiful day. Talk to me about the size of the Dorado. Are they all five pounders? Are there ten no, pounders? Are there twenty pounders? We it was all between like ten to fifteen. Oh wow! The there's a couple guys that caught some good ones. Yeah, like even know, bigger above fifteen. Yeah, but we didn't see any five pounders. Oh good, man. no I'm... ten like I don't, ten pounders not really. They they were all. Decent better, size. better, decent better, size. better. Yeah, they were all decent size. One of the best trips of your life. Best, best by the far. Best, the best. I bet you can't wait to get out again. I want to. Yeah. Is there any room on these boats? Nope. They're <laughs> sold out for the next week and a half. I think. Oh my God. Monday get, through Sunday. You got to find some. Jaime, I deeply appreciate you spending time. You and Dream I took up. a picture together down at Sam's. Yeah. Uh, the Island Fishing Tackle in Carson. Yeah. And did. I either forgot to post it or I posted it. And you didn't see it. Either way, you get to be on the Free Minute Adventure show now. What's up, everybody? Yes. Jaime, thanks again, my friend. Good job. (laughs) Thank you, brother. Appreciate it. (laughs) Good job. All right, Jaime Gutierrez with some great fishing. And I'm telling you, private boaters are all over this too. I'm hoping Jason and Anthony are getting them right now. But a guy by the name of Michael Aguila was out, and he said he found the flotilla. So many boats, he said, you know what, I'm out of here. So he started going to mid-channel, found a kelp that was loaded, that one didn't bite, but they got a few fish off it. And then later, they started to catch more and more Dorado. But Michael Aguila, who's another guy who's a part of the Freeman Adventures family, and I know I'm throwing that around a lot, but I really feel that way about all of you. And Michael, what was he most stoked about? Not that he caught Dorado, not that his boat caught Dorado, but that his friend's seven-year-old son caught his first two Dorado, these colorful, brilliant fish that come out of the water, that's what he was most happy about. And incidentally, this seven-year-old kid, I don't have a name on him, but he just kept repeating over and over and over, mahi, 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 mahi. What a magical moment for Michael and this seven-year-old kid. I, I think that is just as good as it gets. All right, let me get you 
to the islands and some more bluefin tuna information. But down there, Todo Santos, lots of yellowtail at Todo Santos. Man, Coronado Islands off the hook, yellowtail fishing, a lot of 15 to 20 pound fish, biting the surface iron, biting the bait. San Diego, I mean, your options down there right now are just incredible. In fact, you can go to the Coronado Islands, fish there, load up on yellow, catch a bunch of barracuda, calico bath, and then you just venture a half hour offshore and you're in Yellowfin City, Bluefin City. Pretty tremendous fishing going on. San Clemente Island, Thunderbird looked at it yesterday and the Navy was doing some ops, made it very difficult. A lot of sea lions. Clemente though has been pretty good at times here recently. If you go in there in the daytime when the bluefin are not biting that well, you can go in there and get a good bite on yellowtail, I mean 30, 40, 50 fish is not out of the ordinary, but it was a difficult day because the Navy kind of was in the areas that Jeff wanted to fish. He went off, found a kelp, got 20 Dorado. The Dorado out in that neck of the woods, I don't know what the deal is, but they're not biting as well as that local fish. The, the local guys are really, really thumping them. And it's a weird thing because I talked to Woody, John Woodrum from The Pursuit about it, and he was like very thoughtful about like, what is it that makes these fish here locally bite and the ones outside not bite? And that's a question that I don't have an answer for, but we'll continue to watch this. And I'm sure that fish outside is going to really start to bite and turn on here again very, very soon. Channel Islands area, mostly rockfish right now. Um, those guys have had a phenomenal year in the Channel Islands. A lot of rockfish, good rock fishing. You're into that kind of stuff. You're going to have your Phil Stardust up out of Santa Barbara, similar kind of thing, Ventura. Cisco's, all those boys doing well, but there's still an occasional flash of sea bass and halibut up there in that neck of the woods. There's some awfully good fishing going on. Local boats um, down there in Ensenada, there's a lot of barracuda again back in the picture. Uh, calico bass fishing, Punta Banda area is great. Up there in San Diego, they don't have to run that far to catch a Dorado. Even half day boats can get in on it. A uh, little bit of bass and barracuda along the coast, all the way up here to Long Beach and beyond. Up there, the barracuda bite in the Channel Islands has slowed, but it's subject to come roaring back. Redondo Special, as we told you, two on the Dorado. It's pretty phenomenal to see that going on. You're going to see more of it to come. It's really going to get exciting there. And surf fishing, good Corvina, yellowfin croaker, all of that up and down the coast right now. Highly recommend you go back and watch Joseph Martina on our live show last night. It was an incredible, incredible night. Over two and a half hours, I think, we went last night in our live show, and I love to do that. We try not to end the show if there's a question up on the board and just a steady flow of questions. Here on the morning briefing, we had a day where 10,000 of you tuned in the other day, thousands of you every single morning, and that means I got to thank you very, very much. Tomorrow, I'm going to meet a friend of mine, Ali Lopez at Gallagher Staging in La Mirada. We're going to gather clothing up, send it down to Mexicali. There's a family who lost their mobile home. Kids were burned in the fire. They have nothing, nothing, nothing. And we're going to send a bunch of clothing down there. Israel de la Cruz is going to donate some money that I'm going to hand to Ali Lopez. And uh, what can I say? That's just part of the Free Mid Adventures family. It's phenomenal. It's great fishing. I can't wait for our Amigo trip. August the 31st, it's going to be mind-boggling. And those trips on board the Pride, Sean Roberts is one heck of a fisherman. And I can't wait to get out there on our final three trips of this year because it's going to be phenomenal. What can I say besides thank you for all your great support? Deeply appreciate it. I'll be back with more info throughout the day, perhaps. And I'll continue to keep it coming and heading in your direction. Thanks, everybody. Can't thank you enough for your great support. Friedman Adventures YouTube channel. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't done so already. And of course, we are on Facebook. We are on TikTok and Instagram. We'll keep you in touch with all the very latest. All right, take care. Have a wonderful day. Thanks again, my friends. <laughs>